Should you install Windows 11 on your computer right now? Well, that was my recommendation. Let's talk about that and answer some of your questions. I recently made a video recommending installing Windows 11 now instead of waiting for the official release. It generated a lot of interest as well as many questions and even garnered criticism that I would suggest installing an insider preview of Windows before it's ready. So today I decided to create a Q&A video in hopes to clarify my position and answer many of your questions. Number one, why would I recommend installing Windows 11 now? Well, one of the main reasons is because the beta version in the insider preview is stable more stable than many of the other updates I've seen in the past with Windows. I think Microsoft's done a good job of building out a good beta version and I think that it's going to be close to the final release in terms of stability. Now, I don't recommend this for a corporate environment or rolling out to a number of different PCs that you have to support, but for home use I don't see a lot of negatives. Certainly you can still run into some bugs and have difficulty with software, but my experience over the past month of using Windows 11 has been pretty solid. So I don't have any problem making the recommendation to do the update now. The other benefit is it's free and you can automatically update to the final release when it becomes available. So why wait? I'm pretty confident that you're going to be successful using Windows 11 in your home computer right now. Number two, should I choose dev or beta? Currently to install Windows 11, you have to be a part of the Windows Insider program. And you can take a look at my previous Windows 11 video to see how you can do that installation. When you join, you have a choice between the dev and beta channels. And of course the dev channel is the early version of the updates that Microsoft puts out for Windows 11. And then once those become a little more stable, they move that into the beta channel. So my recommendation is to go with the beta channel unless you're absolutely interested in finding out all the new features available in the dev. The beta channel is going to be much more stable and that's the one that I've comfortably been using for the last month. Number three, will I lose my data when upgrading? The answer is no. When you do the install of Windows 11, it brings over all of your files and retains all of your software. So you don't have to worry about losing anything when you're doing this update to Windows 11. However, I will warn you that if you have a computer that does not meet the minimum requirements for Windows 11, you can still install it, but you'll be forced to go back to Windows 10 at a later date when Windows 11 becomes final. By going back, you're going to have to do a clean install of Windows 10. You can't just downgrade it from 11 back to 10. And at that point, you're going to have to reinstall all your data files and applications. So just be aware of that little caveat. As long as your machine meets all the minimum requirements for Windows 11, you won't have to go through that process and you can keep moving forward with all of your files and data intact. Number four, should I make a backup image? The answer is yes. If you've seen my previous video, Get Windows 11 Now, I walk you through the steps to create a backup image of your data in Windows 10 before you do the update to Windows 11. This is particularly important if you have a computer that does not meet the minimum requirements. As I just mentioned, you may be forced to go back to Windows 10 unless you update the hardware into something that's acceptable for the requirements. By doing a backup image, you can actually copy all your data off onto some USB or other device, and then you can just do a restore that will take you all the way back to your Windows 10 with all of your data files and applications intact. And that's a much easier solution than trying to do a clean install of Windows 10 if you're forced to be in that position. Number five, why are the requirements so high? Microsoft created some backlash from consumers when they released the minimum system requirements to run Windows 11. Things like TPM 2.0, UFI firmware, um, secure boot, and the additional memory requirements and CPU requirements. Those are quite high and several people have computers that are only three or four years old that don't meet those minimum requirements. To make it even worse, some systems require a TPM 2.0 chip to be installed and with shortages on chips and other components, they're not available. 
so it forces people to upgrade their hardware quite a bit in order to run Windows 11. So what's the reason for all these high minimum requirements? Well, there's two main things that Microsoft is saying that they're doing this for. It's stability and it's security. In some of their testing, they determined that 60% less malware issues occur when TPM 2.0 is installed on your operating system. So that's one of the reasons for that requirement. In addition, you're going to have more stability with newer systems that are faster processors and have higher levels of memory. So I think that's going to reduce the amount of support requirements they have going forward. And it's probably a little early to push those high-end requirements, but I think long-term it makes sense that Microsoft is moving that direction, especially with the viruses and hacking that have been spreading around much more in the recent years. So that's the reason why Microsoft has been driven to require these high standards for their new Windows 11 operating system. Number six, when is the official release date? Well, currently, Microsoft has not provided any official release date for Windows 11. There have been some rumors floating around showing an October 20th date and some documentation that have gone out to some of the PC manufacturers. However, there's still nothing coming from Microsoft with any timeline, whether it's even in 2021 or will push into 2022. Now, I will say that the uh, beta version of Windows 11 is fairly stable and to me looks like it's getting close to being released so I could see that October 20th date being accurate and it's likely that that date will be for new PCs that people purchase and that those that want to do upgrades may not occur on that same timeline now some of the latest documentation that I received talking about the dev channel it specifically said that the release for later this year will occur so that tells me that they're still planning on doing it in 2021 but whether it's going to be october november december it's your guess as good as mine number seven can i stay with windows 10 absolutely in fact windows 10 is going to be supported until october 14 2025 just make sure not to join the Windows Insider program and select the Dev or Beta channel because that will force it into Windows 11. Otherwise, you can stay with 10 and you'll have continued support until then. Number eight, how long does it take to install? You can expect one to two hours for the full installation of Windows 11 or maybe even longer if you have a slow computer or a really slow internet connection. Just make sure you go into the Windows Update and complete all the updates and reboot multiple times until it's complete. Number nine, how do you install Windows 11? There's two methods to doing the installation of Windows 11. The first is to download it using Windows updates. And the second is to download an ISO file from Microsoft and install it directly. Both of those methods still require you to join the Windows Insider program and I show you how you can do it directly from the Windows updates in my other Get Windows 11 Now video. So take a look at that and you can walk through the process. Number 10, should I install it on my production PC? Well, I am. This is my production PC I'm recording with right now, and it's running Windows 11. Now, I understand this is a decision you'll have to make on your own, and I did get pushback from a number of people saying that it's a bad idea recommending a beta version for your production environment. However, I have enough confidence in this that I'm using it that way myself. You can make the decision for yourself. Well, I hope this answered some questions you may have about Windows 11 beta. Now make sure you check out my Get Windows 11 Now video in order to find out how you could do a backup of your image before you do the installation and the process you go through to join the Windows Insider program and do the installation of Windows 11. I'll put a link at the end of this video and in the description of the video as well. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click the thumbs up and leave a comment. I really do appreciate your support.